Our next speakers are um, Linda Reinstein, of course, our, our, one of the co-founders of ADAO, and uh, uh, along with uh, Raja Flores, who's chair of thoracic surgery at Mount Sinai. I am the co-founder of ADAO, and I am so excited to share the highlights and progress and that we have experienced in the last two plus years since we met in April 2019, especially as ADAO dedicates the entire month of September to mesothelioma awareness. Now, this is the first year we've ever had our conference completely live streamed, and it is free around the world. It is important to ADO to remove financial barriers to education. We believe this life-saving information should be accessed by everyone. And you will hear from my colleagues around the world later today that will reaffirm that. This is another way that ADO stands up for health equity. We want that for all. Though we can come together in person, I'm hopeful next year we can, there are some great successes and amazing steps that we've taken forward in our prevention and policy work, especially with our art advocacy and education. But first, let's talk about the greatest challenges that we have to dispute. Both Anna and Mavis made compelling speeches and presentations about the information that swirls around that is completely incorrect. Let's be clear about this. There are six things. Asbestos has not been banned. There is no safe level of asbestos exposure. Imports and use continue. In fact, in 2020, more than 300 metric tons of raw asbestos were imported from Russia and Brazil. Each year, over 40,000 Americans die from preventable asbestos-caused diseases. Nearly 70 countries have banned asbestos, and I want to also explain that the FDA has jurisdiction over cosmetics and personal care products, not the EPA. So in starting my presentation about progress and challenges, I want to step back for a brief second. For those of you who I haven't met, I am a mesothelioma widow. And like many of you, I understand what Anna is saying about having those difficult conversations. We had to start those when Emily, our daughter, was just 10. I look at an empty kitchen chair now this morning. Alan died three years later after his diagnosis. Doug's stepfather didn't last as long as Alan. It made Doug and I angry, sad, and frustrated to know that imports continued. And that really started our work with ADIO. We have become a leading stakeholder in prevention and policy. We have worked with the EPA to help shape the Lautenberg Chemical Safety Act implementation. We work with Congress to move the Allen Reinstein Ban Asbestos Now Act, the acronym is ARBAN, forward. And we have delivered educational information around the world with help from partners like IOSH. You'll hear from Simon later. So let's talk a little bit about ARBAN because our legislative and legal work has been spectacular, thanks to Bob Sussman and many others. Our ban passed out of the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Energy and Commerce with a bipartisan vote of 47 to 1, November 2019. We were so excited that this really had a chance. However, it did not get the House vote it deserved, but the bipartisan momentum continues today. This is exciting. If you click open the link that you were given this morning by way of an email, you will find a letter inside the program from Senator Jeff Merkley. Let's, let's start with some good news. His discussion draft, which is just that, it's for discussion, for the 2021 ARBAN bill to begin the legislative process looks terrific. Yes, it will ban asbestos imports and use. It will study legacy asbestos in our homes, schools, workplaces, and even on consumer shelves. It's important. And lastly, it will improve EPA's chemical data reporting. The bill is also, and I know Dr. Black will talk about this, it also bans for the first time the Libby Amphibole, Winchite, and Richterite that causes great health risk in Libby and beyond. Now, inside your program, you're going to find three letters. That's why the program was a little bit late being published. It was worth the wait to me. Senator Merkley, Danes and Tester have letters in your program supporting the need to ban asbestos, but also a little bit of a welcome message to you as conference attendees. 
Yesterday, we actually issued a press release because we sent an open letter with our colleagues urging Senators Merkley and Danes to move this excellent discussion draft forward in the legislative process. Now, Dr. Brad Black is an expert in Libby and around the nation and world. You're gonna hear an update from Brad. And while we still have strong bipartisan support and stakeholder support about our ban, we want you to know that we're gonna need all of you to help ban the Libby Amphibole and the other six fibers. Let's keep going. Even during COVID, ADA hosted two congressional staff briefings, along with experts and victims that shared their story. If you were on yesterday, like Mavis, you would have you would have watched our 16th congressional staff briefing with many experts that are on today. And without these briefings and our panel speakers and our experts, we have a hard time delivering the message to staffers who and members who manage so many important if, it issues in Congress. So our educational materials and conversations are critically important. Let's talk about legal. I never thought I'd say I would be suing the EPA, but we did. And here's what happened. We won. Thanks to Bob Sussman and our co-petitioners. According to our case, companies are now required to report their asbestos importation and use. Reporting is critically important to address the risks of asbestos to protect the health of every person in America from asbestos. And now we have legal standing, which means ADO can use our organization and the American Public Health Association also was recognized with standing. We can use our two organizations to advance public health policy and prevention which is amazing. So Bob Sussman will give you more about this later this afternoon, but my personal and deep thanks to Bob who works tirelessly with me to support ADO's mission. So let's talk about the uh, Asbestos Awareness Week. We, we have that championed by Senator Tester from Montana. And I know Brad's probably smiling there because you got a lot of muscle in Montana, Brad. Well, we've held 16 congressional staff briefings. We've held, uh, we've received We've championed eight Surgeon General warnings. Those are also listed in your program, all commenting about the dangers of asbestos. And we have partnered for prevention with IOSH for Global Asbestos Awareness Week. We have taken education to new heights. We are very proud as an organization. We work closely with the firefighters and there isn't anybody probably as a union that I have the greater respect for when it comes to a disaster. I had to call them many times when Alan was ill. They come with their knowledge and their hearts. With climate change and natural disasters, our first responders are having to step up more than ever before. These storms wreak havoc on communities in the US and around the world. If a structure is contaminated with asbestos and it is either damaged, implode, or needs repair later, if it has asbestos, there can be exposure. So we are working with another partner to uh, release our new uh, natural disaster campaign. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about best practices and government materials that should be accessed before a natural disaster. If anybody lives in Los Angeles, you may have felt the 4.7 earthquake last night as we were working on the program. I thought maybe that was Alan telling me I needed to stop working, but that earthquake made Emily and I run for shelter. That is what we're gonna be experiencing more and more. So let's talk about our grassroots efforts about spreading awareness. And, and Anna commented about how important that is to raise awareness. We're constantly working with the media. We've been quoted, we submit op-eds, we, we even participated, we were asked to participate in an NPR three-part series in the state of North Carolina called Asbestos Town. And they did an amazing job bringing the community together in this three-part series. And it's important to know that when we have used asbestos and possibly the use has stopped, we leave a toxic dump behind and a community in peril. Oftentimes, it is environmental racism. These communities don't have the dollars and the legal counsel to muscle up. It's wrong. So let's talk about a few other things. And Arthur Frank was the, Dr. Frank was the first one to step up. 
We had to cancel our conference in March of 2019. It is no easy feat. Ellen and I and others had worked on it for over a year. We canceled and we thought, what next? Can we, can we rebook in September of 2019? We saw the science and the data coming out and we knew that it would be risky. But I called up Dr. Frank and I said, hey, Dr. Frank, we need to get our community together. Can we do a Zoom conversation about what people need to know during COVID? And of course, as Arthur always does, sure, Linda, no problem. Subsequently, we had 10 other conversations that talked about awareness, advocacy, education, human rights, and more. They're all online. If you can't find them, send me an email. Everybody has it. I'm really proud of our art, advocacy, shared story efforts. We have worked for 17 years on bringing together our stories. You can find them on our website. Anna, Mavis, our personal story about Alan, of course, Kim's story about, um, um, oh gosh, I just lost my, my, my bill. Um, you'll see over 200 stories. So we take our stories. And then when we have a congressional briefing, we link up each of those constituent stories to the member. We're able to say what you do in Pennsylvania matters. Listen to Marilyn Amento. So we link our stories to policy and prevention. We also use film and song. How can you just read statistics and papers? Trust me, I am all about the science, real science. And I know we need those, those, those peer reviewed papers published. But as Dr. Selikoff said, statistics are just people with the tears wiped away. We know our stories are important. And I'm excited to pursue the next chapter of ADO's educational efforts. And we have worked with Dr. Raja Flores in Mount Sinai in 2019 and did a session with his med students. I also work with Dr. Christine Oliver who aired Dirty Laundry, the film at her university. So watch for more in this space. So it is tough to be a widow and see an empty chair and, and experience grief. Sorry, I must be tired. But this will be the fifth time Senator Durbin will recognize all asbestos victims, past, present, and future, by flying a flag over the US Capitol at the request of ADAO. We need more representation in Congress. We want our stories heard. We want the extra experts to be recognized as just that, the experts. So when you look at our stories, I want you to think about what can you do to help in this movement. It is not a moment or a catchy phrase. It is a movement that will last until I am long gone. It will take over 50 years to clean up this man-made disaster. One thing you can do is connect to ADL with our newsletter. You can help us financially by make a donation. You can share the conference proceedings with your colleagues. You can read the program and see what you think. And you can also support Eric Yonke from Belgium, who will be publishing his book soon about how asbestos impacted his entire family. Follow ADO for more details. I can't lie, it has not been easy in the last two and a half years. It hasn't, but we have made amazing progress. So this is a time to embrace hope, collective activism, and lace up your shoes for the ultimate marathon. This conference will inspire you, it will challenge you, and hopefully it will bring you up to help us in the next session. It is my greatest honor to introduce you by way of video to Dr. Raja Flores, ADO Science Advisory Board member and a New York City mayoral candidate. He sends his regrets for not being here. He spoke at our August staff briefing. This is a message that everyone should see and share. Uh, I clipped his video with his permission. So if our team will roll Dr. Flores' video, we will then move on to our next speaker. Here's Dr. Raja Flores. Colleague, Dr. Raja Flores, a eminent, preeminent cardiothoracic surgeon at Mount Sinai, which is my alma mater. Raja. Um, misinformation results in death whether it's from COVID or whether it's from asbestos. And 20 years ago, when those towers came crashing down, misinformation spread just as fast. Lies such as the air was safe to breathe, asbestos levels were negligible. And the biggest lie is that asbestos was banned in the United States. 
Whether this misinformation was for political gain or monetary profit, I don't know. The facts are the air was not safe. Asbestos levels were dangerously high and asbestos is still not banned in the United States. Since that dreadful day, approximately 2,600 more deaths have occurred over the past 20 years and counting. First responders continue to die. And this is unavoidable because of their heavy exposure. But what is avoidable is the continued exposure of innocent Americans to asbestos. Asbestos continues to be imported. It contaminates gaskets, friction products, brakes, roofing materials. It also contaminates children's makeup and crayons. And the list goes on. The truth is, is that asbestos is still not banned in the United States, and it continues to be imported. Legacy asbestos still lives in the walls of many of the New York City buildings, including public housing. And every once in a while, an unsuspecting construction worker, fireman, or tenant becomes exposed to this hidden, deadly carcinogen. But this life-saving information about asbestos not being banned in the United States is not nationally known. Many are surprised when they find out that asbestos continues to be imported, that it is not illegal, that asbestos is still not banned in the United States. There are those who profit from this misinformation. And pe people continue to die from this misinformation. American politicians have chosen to look the other way. Mesothelioma is a deadly cancer from asbestos exposure. And I cannot look the other way. It is a disease that I battle with every day in the operating room, cutting out cancer ravaged lungs and other body parts for a disease that is 100% percent preventable. No asbestos, no mesothelioma. It is that simple. Congress, you know what's the right thing to do. Ban asbestos today and stop the continued death and suffering of innocent Americans. You can save more lives with the stroke of your pen than I can with the cut of my scalp. Thank you, uh, Linda and uh, Dr. Flores.